it's my work is most appreciated by people who have seen a lot in any country. I mean, be it Europe, be it here, or be it in the US, or be it, I do have some Japanese friends. They, they also say, huh, you're crazy. <laughs> My name is Ute Jekyll and I'm from Hamburg, Germany. I'm a professional leather carver full-time since 30 years. My company is Buccaneer Design and I started Buccaneer Design in 1990. So it's 31 years now, full-time, every day, except for little vacations. <laughs> and little travels like here. I discovered it because I've always loved to work with my hands. And then for the first couple of years, I just digested the basic techniques. And then from there on, I developed my own style and I really let these old techniques evolve into today's time. Most of the work I do is in the motorcycle field. Uh, people needed stuff for the motorcycle. They needed bags, they needed tank covers, tool rolls. That used to be made out of leather. Like 30, 40 years ago, it, it was all leather. So I'm sort of keeping a lost trade alive. I could combine my art with something that you could use. So it's not just a bag that you get from me. It's a piece of art because you can buy a lot of leather bags that are factory made and you got a thousand off the same bag, you know, they're made somewhere in a factory. But then you go and get a custom made one. I do motorcycle seats, I do wallets also for bikers, but also for normal people. <laughs> I do belts, book covers, tank covers, horn covers, anything you can think of, I can do. And I even do for, for ladies, I do lipstick holders for the handlebars so they can put their lipstick in there. I'm, I'm really a biker at heart, so I'm riding motorcycles since I'm 16 years old. I'm riding Harley since, when, 30 years, more than 30 years. And a biker has to travel the world. You know, you can't just sit at home. You have to go, you have to ride long stretches, clears your head, and that's also where I get my ideas from. Travel always widens your world. Like when, when I first came here a couple of years ago, for me it was totally different way of looking at things because you're so much into ornamentic work, which I admire, it's, it's really cool. So this goes in my brain, stays there a little while, and then comes out through my hands and my work. We flew into Dubai and it was really love at first sight. People here, they love to laugh and that's what we like too. Over the years, we made some really cool friends here and what I admire is the way the UAE people um, make it that impossible is possible. My favorite material to work with is leather because the, the leather I use is vegetable tanned. It's the old way of tanning leather. And that leather lives with you. You can shape it, bend it, do structures on it, and it'll, it'll stay like that. See, it sort of lives with you. You get older, like you get gray hair, and the leather gets 
Here is spot, there is spot, but it won't break. It's a very long living material. Many of my clients I don't know personally. I know them only from the phone. Because, you know, I've, I've got clients in Kuwait and in Oman, in Austria, in the US, so they can't come to my studio. But we can talk on the phone. And I can sort of, this is a gift I have maybe, I can sort of hear what they want. You know, we talk back and forth and then I find out, I make some sketches and then I go about and try to work around their idea and make something that's just personal for them. Where they can say, this is mine, this comes out of my brain and she just could see what I wanted and they, it's all off mainstream. It's a one-of-a-kind piece. The Europeans have a different way of looking at things. So this is why I do real dragon skin because there's a long history of dragons and magicians in Europe and so I thought since I do structures um, in leather, I should do some real dragon skin. Every job has its dark corners. The, the carving part is the fun part. Then you have to sew it all together by hand most of the time. I do all that myself also to be sure that I have the right quality in it because the craftsmanship is very important, I think. I cannot just glue stuff together and say, here you go. You, the, the whole thing has to be a piece of art all together. The craft side and the design side. See, there is a thing in Europe that you have uh, in, in the old times with stories and fairy tales. There was always the dragon and then the prince killing the dragon and getting the princess. Basically, that's, that's it. And many people say, oh, that's just stories. It's, it's not real. And then, but they are cool stories, you know? It's always, it's imagination. And so I started to, to do a structure in leather, it's just a structure in on cowhide. It's cow. <laughs> it's, but this is how I imagine the dragon's skin. So nobody knows. Maybe there were dragons, but I do have a piece of dragon skin. I do have that, and, and you can have that too. So it's, to me, it's imagination. It's just the thing that I do. It looks like dragon skin. And it comes out of my imagination. That's it. I have a couple of renowned customers in the motorcycle field. And the the thing that made me most proud was Willie G. Davidson. Um, he used to be, he's retired now, but when he ordered from me, he was head of the design department, department of Harley Davidson. And he ordered something from me and that really made me, uh, I didn't know what to say when he ordered. I met him in Hamburg and he loved my stuff and uh, ordered something. and. That really is cool. Then I have Ralf Schumacher, the brother of Michael, the Formula One race car driver. Um, he has a seat from me, but he also has a rifle bag and a traveling bag and wallets and stuff like that. 
and then there is actors that are known in Germany, very, very well known in Germany, and musicians also. I do guitar straps, plus I have fellow master leather carvers that when I meet, him, meet them, they want to see my work and then sometimes they say, how the hell did you do that? Because it's, I also have to put my idea into the object, you know. It's, my work is most appreciated by people who have seen a lot in any country. I mean, be it Europe, be it here, or be it in the US, or be it, I do have some Japanese friends. They, they also say, huh? You're crazy. <laughs> German Autobahn, some, some stretches you can go as fast as you want. And when it's like 35 degrees and you're sweating going 140 on the Autobahn, that's my thing. That's really, it's so seldom in Germany, but it's, um, you can't explain. See, there's a biker saying, if I had to explain, you wouldn't understand. You cannot explain that. I just feel sorry for those who don't ride at all. <laughs> it's, it's not that you have to ride Harley or this or that. It's just riding a motorcycle. It's the important thing for me. And like, no matter what brand, just ride.